Hi, I'm Alan Foster, Range Management Extension Specialist with Saskatchewan Ministry of Agriculture of Tisdale. And in this presentation, I'm going to provide a brief review of the Saskatchewan Forest Range Health Assessment Indicator Method for assessing forested pastures. The indicator method asks a series of questions to determine the ecological health of a forested pasture. The questions address the vegetation status of the site, and also the hydrologic function and soil protection status of the site. The details for this assessment method are provided in the Native Grassland and Forest Range Health Assessment Field Workbook, and you see a picture of it there on the screen. There are five questions to the assessment, and they deal with plant community composition, community structure, invasive plants, soil erosion, bare soil, and surface organic matter, which is the thickness of the LFH layer, the litter fermenting and humified layer that sits above the mineral soil. So this method compares the area being assessed to a lightly grazed or ungrazed reference community on the same ecosite. If you don't have a lightly grazed or ungrazed area to compare it to, you can use the reference communities in the ecological site descriptions provided in this publication, Ecosites and Communities of Forested Rangelands. And just to note, not all sites are described in this publication, but many of them are. It's important to compare the assessment area to the reference community on the same ecological site. And here in the example, we see uh, a grazed aspen stand on the loam site, and we need to compare that to a, a reference aspen stand on a loam site. Question one asks, what is the plant community? So you would need to consider, is the vegetation similar to the reference community? Are decreaser species abundant and vigorous? And are you finding non-native species? So decreaser species like aspen rice grass and wild sarsaparilla are indicators of range health. And to help with this question, some of the main decreaser species that you would find in a forested pasture are listed on the forest assessment field worksheet in the workbook. You will also have to identify other species that are on the site. A shorter species like strawberry or less palatable species like uh, snowberry in this example will increase with grazing. And as a result, you would expect to see um, them in more abundance as grazing pressure increases. Also an increase in non-native species like Kentucky bluegrass and dandelion are an indicator of the declining range health. And these will generally become more abundant also with the increased grazing pressure. Question two asks, are the expected plant layers present? So forest communities have a number of layers. Uh, naturally, we would expect the tree layer but uh, the understory will have uh, tall shrub and short shrub layers, along with tall herb and short herb layers. And then moss and lichens will be on the forest floor. So with grazing, we can get a reduction or elimination in one or more of these layers. And in this example, uh, you can see a, a decline in tall shrub uh, and short shrub layers under moderate grazing in an aspen stand on a loamy site. Question three asks, are invasive species present? Uh, invasive species will crowd out our native vegetation and some of the examples of invasive species you might find in a uh, grazed forest pasture um, would be Kentucky bluegrass, smooth brome, 
some of the clovers, uh, possibly tarragana. And to help you with this question, you can uh, find a more complete list in Appendix 4 of the workbook. So question 4.1 is asking, is there more soil erosion than expected for this site? And signs of soil erosion include hoof shearing, um, possibly erosion on livestock or vehicle trails, and then in a smaller scale, pedestaling of plants. And again, a number of examples are provided in the workbook. This question asks, is there more bare soil than expected for this site? Uh, here you would look at bare soil on livestock and vehicle trails, uh, possibly bare soil as a result of timber harvesting if there was any. And you would also need to consider and include uh, bare soil caused by rodent burrowing. And sometimes that will happen where you get um, um, more heavy grazing in, the, in an area. Non-vegetated areas covered with organic matter, like you see in the picture here where the um, non-vegetative areas is, are covered with leaves, those are not considered bare soil in this assessment method. And the final question asks, how thick is the surface organic layer, the LFH layer? So here you will need to compare the thickness of the LFH layer to the thickness found in the reference community. And the best way I find to do this is to dig a hole and expose the soil profile and measure the organic matter layer above the mineral soil, like you would see here in the picture. In summary, there are a number of indicators of forest ecological health, our community composition, community structure, and base of plants, bare soil, and soil erosion, and thickness of the surface organic layer that you would need to consider when you're doing an assessment. Again, the full details for the indicator method for completing a forest health assessment are provided in the native grassland and forest range health assessment field workbook um, or for more information you can also call range management extension specialists with the Saskatchewan Ministry of Agriculture.